This is a video demonstration of the endovascular stent planning application. With a single left click, select your patient exam record. On the applications bar, with a single left click, select endovascular stent planning. Verify the series used to work up the application is highlighted blue. To launch into the viewer, either double left click on the endovascular stent planning application or select the open button in the bottom right hand corner. After the application launches into the viewer, note that the common aorta, the right aortic iliac, and the left aortic iliac are automatically probed by the application. Probing vessels, whether it's an automatic feature or a manual process, allows for easier measurements of stenosis and vessel analysis. On the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see our work list or measurement list. Just below the measurement list and above the diagram, you'll see triple A. Select the drop-down to select a different work list. For this training video, we'll use the default AAA worksheet. The diagram below the worksheet identifies the locations of the different measurements listed on the worksheet. Notice that the anatomy and segment anatomy sections are hidden on the left-hand side of the screen. Click on the small chevron at the top of the page to expand or collapse the section. If there is a need to customize the worksheet, right-click, choose from Delete or Rename a Measurement, or select Edit Measurement Lists to create your own custom template. Explode your 3D image viewport to full screen with a double left click or selecting the one up button in the upper corner of the 3D image. To fit our curved planar reformat image to full screen, rather to fit the window, select the button that looks like a small lightning bolt in the upper left of the CPR image. Prior to creating any measurements, ensure that the common aorta is highlighted blue on your worksheet. In our curved planar reformat, or CPR, do a right click to bring up the right click menu and select the top option, Edit Center Line. This will draw a green line down what it believes is the center of the vessel. To make changes to this line, plot points within the vessel. and grab any points and move them as needed. Rotate around your vessel to verify that you've placed your points correctly in all views. To save these changes, select the Apply button in the lower left corner of the CPR image. To start over, hit Reset. When finished, whether saving changes or not, select the close button. Next, verify the software has captured the contours of the lumen accurately. Once again, right click in our CPR image. This time, select the second option, edit contours. A matrix of cross axial slices is now placed on our screen. These axial slices are perpendicular to the lumen center line. The lumen contours are identified with a light blue border. The wall contours are identified with an orange border. To 
to focus on just the lumen in the upper left hand corner. Turn the wall contours off by unchecking the box. Notice the worm like structure in our CPR image. Each line represents a cross axial slice to the left of the CPR image. By default, the spacing between slices is around five millimeters thick. To change the spacing, grab one end of the worm-like object or the other, left click and drag. Dragging towards the other end will decrease the slice thickness. Dragging away will increase the slice thickness. To move the entire worm-like object or contours, hover in the center, left click and drag. Rolling the mouse wheel will also move through the slices. To edit the contours, hover over the contour line in one of the cross axial images. Left click and drag and redraw the border of the contour. If the same edit is needed on multiple slices, edit the first slice. And go to the last slice. When you select the apply button, the software will interpolate the slices in between. Once again, if the same edit is needed on multiple slices, edit the first slice, edit the last slice needed to edit, select the apply button and the software will interpolate the slices in between. Continue to go through your images until the entire vessel has been edited for contours. Repeat this process for the wall by unchecking the lumen and turning the wall on. Again, Scroll through your image slices to ensure that the wall is accurately represented. After all contour edits are complete, select the close button on the bottom of the screen. Turn off the wall once again. On the worksheet, select the first measurement, lowest renal diameter. To better demonstrate whether the right or left renal artery is the lower of the two, in the bottom right hand corner of our CPR image, select the red slash to change to a straightened or lengthened view. Use your slide bar to rotate around the image. After the renal arteries are located, roll the mouse wheel to move a hidden dark blue line underneath the light blue line to the desired location. Once there, grab the light blue line and superimpose over the dark blue line. To see our cross axial measurement a little easier, in the upper right hand corner of our 3D image, select the toggle view button, which looks like three stacked boxes single left click. This provides a large cross axial slice image. If you disagree with the measurements placed, hover over one end or the other to change location or length of the measurement. Once you've determined that your measurement is accurate, on our work list, Check the box on lowest renal diameter. This will lock your measurement in place and 
place your findings on the report page, which we will discuss later. Take a snapshot to save your progress. To return to our original CPR view, in the lower right hand corner, select on the red slash twice. On our work list or worksheet, select the next measurement, 15 millimeters below lowest renal diameter. The software automatically places a light blue bar at the location and provides a length measurement, giving the 15 millimeter length at the bottom of the CPR image with the diameters from our cross axial slice. Again, if you disagree with the placement of these lines, hover over any endpoint on the diameter lines, left click and drag to the new location. Once satisfied with the measurement, once again, check the box to save and lock that measurement in place. Take a snapshot to record your progress. Select our next measurement from the worksheet, distal neck diameter. Once again, the software will automatically place the line where it believes is the distal neck diameter. If you disagree, you can roll the mouse wheel to change the location. Notice the dark blue line is the line that moves when you roll the mouse wheel. If you have changed locations, left click and drag the light blue line to superimpose over the dark blue line. Edit the diameters if necessary, as in previous steps. When you agree with the measurements, check the box to lock the measurement in place and take your snapshot. Select the next measurement from the list, max aneurysm diameter. For this, we'll need to turn the wall on. In the upper left, check the box for wall. To identify the accuracy of the location chosen, we'll go back to our straighten view, which provides a histogram. With the wall turned on, you'll note that the red line on the histogram represents the lumen. The orange or yellow represents the wall. Roll the mouse wheel to allow you to move the dark blue line to select the widest portion of the aneurysm. Once the correct location is determined, Grab the light blue line and once again superimpose over the dark blue line. Make edits to the diameters as necessary in our cross axial view. Unhappy? Check the box to lock the measurement in place and take your snapshot to save your progress. To return to our original CPR view, again, Select the red slash in the bottom right hand corner twice. And in the upper left hand corner, turn the wall off by unchecking the box. Select our next measurement, distal aorta diameter. Once again, if you disagree with the placement of the line provided by the software, roll the mouse wheel and move the dark blue line to the desired location. Once there, Again, grab the light blue line and superimpose over the dark blue line. If happy with measurement placement, check the box to lock the measurement in place. Take your snapshot. Select the next measurement, aortic neck length. Again, the software automatically places this length measurement. It is based on the original location of the renal diameter and the distal neck diameter. If you agree, lock the measurement in place, take the snapshot. 
select the next measurement, lowest renal bifurcation length. Again, the software will automatically place the measurement line for you. If you disagree, roll the mouse wheel to the desired location. Once there, again, grab the light blue line to superimpose over the dark blue line. When happy, lock the measurement in place, take the snapshot. Select the next measurement, proximal aortic neck angle. Again, the software will automatically create this measurement for you. Notice at the bottom of the CPR image, the number of degrees of this neck angle. If we agree, lock the measurement in place, Take your snapshot to save your progress. Select the last measurement in the common aorta, lowest renal bifurcation volume. Once again, software will automatically place this measurement for us. Notice at the bottom of the CPR image, we have a total volume in cc's and a wall and lumen volume, along with a length measurement. If you agree with these measurements, Lock in place by checking the box on the measurement list or worksheet. Take a snapshot to save your progress. When the aorta measurements are finished, left click on the right aortic iliac on the worksheet. Again, to fit our CPR image into the window, Select the lightning bolt in the upper left corner of the CPR image. Remember to use the right click menu to edit both the center line and the contours of the iliac vessel prior to making any measurements. Once completed with editing, editing the center line and the contours, Select your first measurement from the worksheet, right common iliac max diameter. The software will automatically place a light blue bar where it believes is the right common iliac. To move the location, again, roll your mouse wheel. If you have changed locations, be sure to grab the light blue line or bar and superimpose over the dark blue bar. If you agree with this location, lock your measurement in place by checking the box. Turn off the wall if necessary in the upper left. Take your snapshot to save your progress. Select your next item from the work list. Write external iliac minimum diameter. Again, the software selects the location for you. You can rotate around your image by using the slide bar at the bottom of the CPR image to verify location. If you agree, lock your measurement in place and take your snapshot to save your progress. On the worksheet, select the next measurement, lowest renal right internal iliac length. This is a length measurement. At the bottom of our CPR image, it gives us a total length and a tortuosity factor. If you agree with this measurement, lock the measurement in place. Take your snapshot to save your progress. Select our next measurement from the worksheet right iliac ceiling length. Again, another length measurement. If you agree with this measurement, lock the measurement in place. Take your snapshot. Select the final measurement for the right aortic iliac. 
Max Tortuosity, right iliac. In order to view this properly, let's change our CPR image to the straightened view with the histogram by selecting the red slash in the lower right hand corner. The peaks in the histogram represent the tortuosity of the vessel. Roll the mouse wheel to move the blue line to the highest peak. In the top portion of our histogram, select the drop down where it says minimum diameter and change to tortuosity. Scratch that last part starting with rolling the mouse wheel. Once in the histogram, at the top of the CPR or the histogram, select the drop down where it says minimum diameter select tortuosity. The peaks represent the most torturous parts of the vessel. Roll the mouse wheel to the highest peak or grab the blue line with the left mouse and drag. Once the location is reached, lock the measurement in place. Notice on the histogram it will give you the number of degrees per centimeter of tortuosity. Take a snapshot to save your progress. Return to our original CPR view by selecting the red slash in the lower right hand corner twice. On our worksheet, highlight the left aortic iliac. Remember to edit the center line and contours as needed, and repeat the steps taken to record measurements in our right aortic iliac on the left aortic iliac. To save time, we'll skip to the end. When all measurements are complete, click on the Report button in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. This opens the Report Editor. The report editor will list all measurements taken. The list will consist of reference on the diagram as to the location of the measurement, the type of measurement, the description of the measurement, and the values of that measurement. Copy the measurement to a CSV file in order to paste to an Excel spreadsheet, or select Print to print up a hard copy of the measurement. Save as a draft, create a Word report, or select Publish Report to create a DICOM image of the report so that it can be sent back to archive. To close the report editor, select the X next to report editor at the top left of the screen. To return to our original 3D layout, either double left click in the 3D viewport or select the one down button in the upper right corner of the 3D image viewport. To remove our vessel probe lines from our image, in the upper left hand corner, uncheck show vessel. This provides just the single 3D image while hiding the curve planar reformat. Expand your anatomy section by selecting the chevron in the upper left. To create a 3D batch of this image, in the upper left hand corner, select the batch tab. In our scripted batch section, under 3D rotation, select the desired rotation. Typically, a full 360 is standard. By default, the batch rotation will rotate to the right or the patient's left. 
choose a different direction, select one of the other arrows. In our Output Control Center, choose the desired step size or number of degrees in between each image it creates or the desired image count. Optionally, add a series description. Select the Batch button. To change the image to a MIP projection, in the lower right of the 3D image viewport, select the Volume Render drop-down. Select MIP. This provides a MIP projection of the image. To create a batch, repeat the steps for creating the 3D batch. Select the desired rotation, direction, step size or image count, Optionally, type in series description and select batch. When finished creating batches, return to the analysis tab by selecting on the analysis tab in the upper left hand corner. To return to our volume rendered image in the bottom right hand corner, select the drop down by MIP and choose Volume Render. To enhance our 3D image by providing bony landmarks in reference to our vessels visualized, in the upper left, in our Segment Anatomy section, select the 3D rendering for semi-transparent. This feature transparents the bones while keeping the vessels more highlighted. To change the transparency, ensure that the base folder is the active folder by noting it is highlighted blue. Down below our anatomy section, you'll see a transparency bar with a left click and drag. Drag to the left to make less transparent, to the right to make more transparent. Once the desired transparency has been reached, let go of the mouse. To create a batch of this information, follow the previous steps for creating the batch. To visualize the measurements created, in our 3D image, right-click to bring up the right-click menu and select Show Overview. This feature will demonstrate description, value, and location of our measurements on our 3D image. To save this, take a snapshot in the upper right-hand corner of our 3D image. When finished, to close the study, select the X on the endovascular stent planning tab in the upper left corner. This will return you to your study list. To see evidence saved, go to the Results tab next to the Applications tab. To save any saved evidence and send back to Archive, use the Control button and single left click on anything needing to be sent to Archive. Right-click on any of the highlighted images. Select Export. Select the destination, then click the Export button. 